Well, good morning, everybody. This week, I have not finally ridden my unicycle. And the reason for that is nothing heroic, I'm afraid. I have badly sprained my ankle. In fact, Mrs. Griffiths and Mrs. Easdale were both saying to me yesterday that I should be going to A&E. Um, nothing heroic. I fell over a lavender root around the Japanese garden when we were busy landscaping it yesterday morning. Um, so I'm afraid that I won't be on the unicycle this week, but I will be in the weeks to come. That is a promise. I am going to learn to unicycle as soon as I possibly can. Now, I'm standing for this assembly next to one of the things that is one of my pride and joys, which is my Royal Enfield motorcycle. Some of the parents watching this will think, well, that's really cool. And other parents will think, why is he talking about his motorcycle? They're really dangerous. And they are really dangerous. And this is not an endorsement to go and ride a motorcycle. However, I'm standing next to my Royal Enfield because there is a lesson that we can learn from this when we are thinking about how we are working at the moment and the things that we are trying to do in our lives. Now, Royal Enfield is a very, very historic company. In fact, the roots of this motorcycle go back 700 years. Near the village of Enfield in Middlesex, there was a medieval armaments um, mill, a factory where they produced weapons for warfare. And in 1530, that weapons mill was actually bought by Henry VIII, who used it when he was trying to create weapons uh, in preparation for fighting the French in the early 1530s. He went on from there to create some of the most famous weapons that the British Army has ever used. In the 1890s, a new rifle called the Lee Enfield Rifle was produced at the factory, which was used until 1957, and it was the standard issue rifle for British soldiers in the Boer War, the First World War, the Second World War, and the Korea, Korean War. And it was named after a chap called Lee who invented the bolt action on the rifle, and it was named after Enfield because of the company that made it. Now in 1901, Enfield, the Enfield Armaments Factory, created a new subsidiary company, separate company, called the Enfield Motorcycle Company, and they became known as Royal Enfield. And from 1901 until the end of the Second World War, they were very successful. They made motorcycles that people rode as transport, but also they made military motorcycles as well that were used by couriers in the First and the Second World War. It was after the Second World War, though, that they became very, very successful, possibly the most successful motorcycle company in the United Kingdom. And the period after the Second World War is called the Golden Age of British Motorcycling because so many motorcycles were sold. Now, Royal Enfield invented a, a model called the Bullet in 1931, which actually you can still buy today, and it's pretty similar to how it was in 1931. But in the late 1940s, they it changed it slightly by inventing what was called a rear swing arm, which really means a suspension, you can see the spring on my bike here, to mean you had a more comfortable ride on the back of it. And this meant that the Bullet became a very, very popular motorcycle because it was so comfortable but it also meant that it handled very well. It was easier to ride, and it became successful in the Isle of Man TC races, but it also became famous for its trials success. And trials is kind of off-road motorcycling. In the early 1950s, a chap called Johnny Britton led the Royal Enfield team, and in one meet called the International Six Day, he won every single race, not dropping a single point. So the Royal Enfield company were hugely successful, were a very, very popular brand, and they thought the future looked golden. However, it didn't. And in the late 1950s, early 1960s, Japan started making motorcycles. Companies like Yamaha and Honda started producing motorcycles which were better, they were inventive. And Royal Enfield didn't respond. They became lazy in effect. They had what I suppose we could call hubris, which means overconfidence because they were the best, because they were the most successful, they always thought they were going to be. And the chief executive of the company, when he visited Japan, said, well, there's nothing really to worry about with those new bikes that are coming out. We will always be the most popular. But very quickly, within 10 years, of course, that changed. And the Japanese bikes, which were cheap and cheerful, but very, very good and very um, high quality and very reliable, overtook the sale of the British bikes. And in 1970, the last Royal Enfield rolled off the production line in Britain, never to be produced here again. And it's a very good example of somebody being at the very top of their game, but suddenly getting a bit lazy, not very innovative, not trying to always improve, not looking to the future, and resting on their laurels, being happy with what they've got. And there are lessons that we can learn in that for ourselves. So if you're at home thinking, 
oh, it's all going okay, it's all going fine, I've done a bit of work and, and uh, I can, because I'm at home, I don't have to work quite so hard, think again, because others will soon catch up with you and others will soon overtake you. So you need to keep working hard all of the time, keep looking to the future, never thinking that your last performance is good enough, always thinking that there is more to come. And the more that you practice, the more that you innovate, the harder that you work, the more and more you will improve. And I wonder what would have happened to Royal Enfield had they kept working in the 1960s. Perhaps they would have still been making motorcycles in Britain today. So if you are in the pre-prep, the reason that there is a bunny or a hare here is that it reminds me of one of Aesop's fables. In that fable, the hare, you may remember, races the tortoise. The hare is so confident that he's going to win. He's the best, he's the fastest, he's the quickest, he's got the most energy. And of course, the tortoise is so slow, so ponderous, there is no way the hare can lose. So the hare decides to rest, sleeps under a tree, forgets about the race, and of course, the tortoise slowly plods along, but eventually overtakes him and takes the lead. And again, that's quite similar to the story of what happened to Royal Enfield. However, there is a happy bit at the end of the tale. For the hare, if he wanted to race again, and he became a little more self-aware and a little less confident, he would win that race with relative ease by continuing to work hard, by continuing to run as fast as he can. For Royal Enfield, they were bought in 1970 by an Indian company who for many years just kept on producing the same models, selling them to the Indian market, where people wanted old-fashioned motorbikes they could work on themselves. But in recent years, they've produced a new series of motorbikes. And in 2019, this particular model became uh, one of the best-selling motorcycle models in the world and won huge numbers of awards. So the lesson in that for us this week and my assembly this week is to say, don't ever be overconfident. Don't always assume that you will be the best. Don't think that your last performance is good enough. Keep working hard, keep giving your best, keep being innovative, keep trying to find new ways to succeed. And if you do that, you will always perform to the best of your ability. Have a great week. I'm hoping you may see me unicycle next week. I have a feeling it might take me a couple of weeks to get back to, to, to full fitness, but good luck. Have a nice week. Bye for now.